Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, let's start. Could you please turn on your video if possible? Thanks. Um, so the plan for today is to keep continue discussion about this uh, hardware layer, which is interesting, I guess, hopefully useful for you guys, uh, because uh, these days um, people only know about the um, upper layer of the stack, how to use uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow or Python, whatever, NumPy, whatever you want to use, do machine learning and knowing deeper about uh, the stack. Uh, would give you some insight um, how to uh, what happens to the program that you uh, write uh, in the actual hardware that you run. So knowing this connection uh, would help you a lot. Um, how computers uh, write run the code that you uh, wrote for uh, learning from data, and and we discussed this is a new paradigm, right? Um, um, essentially um, this is software 2.0 uh, or data-driven um, software right uh, or learning um, however you want to call it uh, essentially some of you the CSS students um, some of you uh, might have already taken like uh, computer architecture um, assembly um, this kind of um, um, you, you, you might have already some idea, like when you write in high level programming languages, what happens, um, how these things gets translated to, um, to what hardware can execute, right, um, directly. So knowing about this detail and the opportunities specifically uh, in terms of uh, optimization, code optimization, and somehow um, like um, similar to the uh, compiler uh, that does code optimization for software 1.0. Um, here, there are lots of opportunity for optimization of ML systems uh, for, yeah, um, for ML system, right? Uh, software 2.0. Um, so this would help you to give an idea what's happening um, down here. Um, would be extremely useful um, for you to um, to know the detail of this stuff. Okay, um, so we discussed. Um, do you have any a question about what we have discussed so far? So uh, I think we went through all of this in detail. So I hope that you got an idea of why. Um, uh, performance matters uh, specifically for this type of systems and um, the, uh, the problem and the opportunities. Today, the plan is to, um, to discuss uh, in some more details, basically, um, about uh, parallelization uh, that we can do, uh, how we can make the program, uh, what are the opportunities, at least for um, Neural networks um, for deep neural networks, at least with the two paradigms uh, that you're already familiar with, um, the uh, fully connected uh, deep neural network and convolutional neural network. Uh, what are the opportunities in terms of optimization uh, and all of this in a little bit more detail, but hopefully we'll go deeper um, inside uh, some of these um, later on. Um, yeah, maybe I skip this, but um, I'm, I'm sure you have heard about uh, the Moore's law, right? Um, increase in terms of um, number of transistors um, over time, uh, right? So the growth of uh, uh, number of transistors over time, but somehow uh, 3x uh, in uh, one generation to the next. Um, but now what is um, happening is that uh, instead of number of transistors, yet number of transistors following similar um, trend. Uh, but the uh, more important metric is um, basically uh, performance that you can get, right? Uh, specifically about single threaded uh, stuff. Um, it's called a specinet. Um, so this is flattening. Uh, oops. 
So this is flattening. Um, and this is very much related to performance of ML, uh, meaning that um, especially in, uh, in these type of uh, systems uh, that requires um, either high computation or high memory access, uh, right? And the, um, the actual computation, uh, the, um, the patterns uh, is different from what you know in, in, um, in um, other type of software, right? Software 1.0. Um, so this is very important and uh, people calling this that uh, Moore's law doesn't exist anymore. So basically uh, the, um, the growth of performance instead of 3x from one generation to another generation is uh, something around 1.2 um, um, roughly. Uh, so that's what people call why uh, Moore's law doesn't exist anymore or, um, um, but Moore's law has been a famous law in computer science and that was kind of key motivator uh, for uh, computer industry um, that um, next year we are going to have, uh, somehow have a prediction uh, what kind of uh, performance we can get from any, the next generation of, uh, of chips that appear uh, out there, right? Um, so that, that's why it was important. But the plan for today is mainly talk about these polarization opportunities for uh, the type of uh, neural network uh, that uh, you have. Um, so one way um, is um, obviously is to use uh, more processors, right? Uh, more um, computational nodes that you can run stuff in parallel. Um, and there are lots of, uh, if you think about, uh, for example, convolutional neural network, um, even this uh, architecture would give you some idea uh, what are these parallelization opportunities, right? Um, if you look at um, input, um, you have lots of data, right? So these are your um, data that you use for training, uh, right? So you can parallelize this, um, you can split into different, um, right? Um, different bags and you can process each bag separately. Uh, this is obviously one way. Uh, obviously you want to, when you want to do this in training, um, uh, because the parameters are uh, shared in, in, uh, neural, uh, in convolutional neural networks, you want to take care of, uh, when it comes to updating the parameters, you want to make sure that uh, you did not operate these different chunks separately, uh, because it means that if you use totally separate things, uh, means that you don't, you did not learn from the other chunk. In this chunk, you did not learn from the other chunk or the other vice versa, right? So you want to have mechanism that uh, you do this splitting and you uh, merge the, this parameter update uh, correctly. And we will discuss about that, how it looks like. Um, uh, you can also think about, um, see also when it goes deeper, um, these feature maps becomes larger and larger. So there are lots of opportunities for doing um, parallelization across these. Um, also, um, if you think about the convolution, um, convolution, um, basically these kernels runs over your input, right? Um, so convolve over your input um, and you can like think about like splitting uh, your feature map into different uh, sections and do them in parallel if you want. Um, so this is also one other opportunity that you can think about parallelization. Um, and also we discuss about memory access. Um, and why it is important uh, to have uh, efficient memory access in uh, neural network uh, because we have loads of weight. Where are the weights in memory? Um, 
how to how you want to uh, retrieve these fates from memory and update them because you want to update them you want to retrieve update in training and during inference you want to basically uh, reuse that um, so um, reuse that for different um, um, different images or different uh, inputs that you feed into uh, the model. Um, so memory is also important and we are going to talk about all of these three uh, today um, at some depth, uh, but uh, hopefully later on we go even deeper. Uh, do you have any question? No question? Are you guys following? Yes, sir. So question might be come <laughs> later, but uh, right now just focusing what you are selling. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so um, lots of opportunity in terms of input, uh, points in the feature map, filters, right? Uh, elements uh, within the filters. Um, Multiplication, basically this arithmetic operation uh, stuff, uh, sums of reduction, um, treating uh, layers independently, right? Um, and also some other um, data dependency between, uh, between layers. So a data dependency, if you think about this, right? Uh, so these layers are not totally independent, uh, right? So you want, you basically uh, rely on, uh, on, for example, if you want to calculate these, these guys, you need these guys, right? Um, so somehow you have some sort of dependency between each layer. Uh, otherwise you could run each layer in parallel, uh, but you cannot do that, uh, right? Uh, because these are uh, dependent uh, with each other, right? Each layer dependent on the previous layer. Um, so you have this dependency. And when it comes to dependency, like dependency is a killer for performance. Uh, so one paradigm, um, as I mentioned, is, um, is do this data parallelization. And the idea is, is super simple, right? Split your data into multiple um, uh, chunks, right? Um, multiple uh, bags. Uh, and then you um, obviously use the same uh, network, right? And process them uh, in order to, um, uh, to, to basically calculate um, the, um, the gradient of the loss with respect to um, the current weight, right? This is um, the current uh, weight that uh, you have at this iteration, right? And then you need to figure out uh, how I, um, I should make the update to the weight because you want to, um, you want to update to the weight, right? Or, or in other way, you want to, um, w i plus plus w i plus um, some um, learning rate. Okay, this this was your learning rate. This was your previous uh, weight vector, and this is your new uh, weight, right? So if you calculate this over this guy, uh, obviously this is different from this guy, right? Uh, because they're running on two different. Uh, data um, data set, right? Um, so somehow you need to figure out the math in order to make this update uh, correctly, right? Um, and and the, uh, there are some paradigm uh, for that, um, right? So for example, one paradigm is um, that appeared um, in 2013 uh, out of Google is using parameter, um, parameter server, right? Um, having a shared uh, place uh, to uh, make these updates, right? Um, so each, each of these workers 
um, work on different data shard, right? And these data shards are different, um, this is a split of data, right? So the data you have here is different from the data you have there. Um, so for each, uh, each of these uh, model workers uh, operate on different data and calculate uh, the respective uh, delta um, um, P, uh, basically this, uh, the delta yeah, that you need to add to the parameters, essentially um, this guy. Uh, this is the delta you want to add to, uh, to the parameters. Um, so you do that um, right here in a shared place. Um, and within this pattern, there are um, two version, right? Um, because um, this guy, again, for the next round, um, so this is iterative, training is iterative. This guy for the next round required this latest uh, value of parameters uh, to, uh, uh, to calculate the next, the next delta to the parameter, right? Um, so the, the first paradigm that uh, was nature was doing this in a sync way, meaning that we wait for all the workers to do their job, meaning that all workers calculate this delta, send it to the parameter server, make the update, calculate the P prime, and then send back the P prime to all workers. So all workers um, continue with the same latest value at every iteration. Um, this, is, um, this is the sync um, version of, of uh, parameter update. Um, but obviously it has some consequences, meaning that if this guy is a lot faster and calculate like uh, it's delta, needs to wait for this uh, slow uh, worker node um, to, to send the delta and calculate um, and get this uh, P prime back, right? Uh, so if you have some slow nodes um, in your pipeline, um, this guy, uh, the, uh, the fastest ones has to wait. Uh, and that's, um, that's not, idea, right? You see the consequences, especially if you have like many heterogeneous compute nodes. Um, um, so, um, so then um, you, you can do async version, meaning that um, this fastest guy um, who, uh, who sent out its delta can, um, can work um, on the uh, the latest version of P uh, that it was calculated uh, locally, right? Obviously, this is not ideal. Um, this is not ideal because this guy um, basically calculated this delta P. Um, it, it, it knew somehow about this uh, uh, from previous iteration, right? Um, so basically, uh, let's... Uh, specify this, right? So it had P, it calculated delta P. So now, um, but this delta P was local, right? Um, and this guy do not want to wait for uh, the central P prime, okay? Um, but has updated locally. Um, so let's call it uh, P prime local. Um, okay, which is different from this prepare. It can continue of uh, doing the same thing on, on this P prime local to calculate the, uh, the next, um, um, the next um, delta, right? Uh, but obviously on an outdated parameters because it did not learn from this guy and this guy, right? Uh, but in the next iteration, uh, when it sends, it has uh, better, um, um, better parameter from previous uh, iterations, right? Uh, so it used the latest, um, the best, uh, the best or latest uh, update to the parameters in order to make this update, right? 
Um, so in async version, um, also eventually it converge, um, but you know that um, there are some nuances in terms of selecting the right uh, learning rate because you don't want to like have a large learning rate when uh, you really do not have the global knowledge about the parameters. Um, it's, um, these are some like tricks um, that you need to incorporate when you want to do async version of this parameter update in this um, in this param paradigm, right? Uh, with the parameter server. Do you have any question? Yeah, I had a question. Um, so the only advantage I could see out of async is if we were to run it like um, for only some duration of time and to decide to stop it, not necessarily after some number of iterations or epochs, like, because I could see how if one of the, sorry, if this was assumed in the, in the scenario where we assume that one of the workers is, is faster than the others, right? Because if there were some necessary number of iterations that each worker needed to, to complete, then if the fastest worker finished its iterations first, it ultimately the whole learning procedure still wouldn't finish until the slowest finished, right? So like what I'm asking, I guess, is is like, is is the is the only way you can get this advantage like with async. Yeah. So you can assign less less work to the slowest one, right? I suppose, yeah. So that's uh, that's also works, right? Um, but essentially like, um, and this, this will show up really at massive scale, right? At Google scale. Uh, that uh, not, not really, you don't see uh, that basically training a very large model. Um, so this uh, uh, data parallelism, like when you have large model and large data, really uh, you want to split it typically like at the scale, a smallest scale that, that doesn't matter much even if you have like two worker nodes, right? Um, in terms of a speed, right? So basically it's like, think about the scenario that we have, like some scenario could be like, you have one day uh, to train your network. If you don't do this, it takes like one week, right? Then if you do this, you you bring it down to one day, right? Um, some craziest case that could have like several months, right? Months as to train like your GPT uh, network uh, with uh, several hundred uh, worker nodes, uh, uh, right? And then um, in a setup like, let's say um, 24 months, you bring it down to maybe three months, right? Of training. So at this scale uh, that we are talking about, um, we'll show up these benefits. Does it make sense? Yeah. Um, and you know that if you do this, um, so this doesn't affect the, uh, uh, right, uh, the latency essentially uh, for one input because it does the same, uh, but you can assign this into multiple, like, nodes using different um, um, different um, and you can think about it as like when you have one node right uh, you remember you for training you send a batches and do a stochastic gradient descent you can think about this that like you split and you do your stochastic gradient descent in parallel for different for different uh, batches right um, and if you previously had like one node of uh, 256 uh, batch size, um, now you have like uh, 10 nodes, right? And you get um, like 
piece bite size in, in total, uh, right? So you, uh, you increase your bite size essentially uh, if you think that way. Um, and this weight update, coordinated weight update happens uh, as a result of uh, this uh, parameter server. You can also think about, uh, like that was for data parallelism. Um, you can think about model parallelism as well for your network. Um, um, so for convolution or network, you remember this uh, expensive uh, 6D look for calculating the output uh, feature maps. Uh, but you can essentially um, think about um, doing this uh, in parallel, right? So you can think about um, splitting this uh, into multiple region uh, in your output feature map, right? Um, and then um, for each of these, um, you can, you can, you can split up. Um, uh, so you do this for all, uh, for all is a, um, now is, is for all of these region, X, Y region here, right? Um, so you do um, essentially parallelize the calculation for each of these region in your output feature map uh, in parallel. And you can assign it into like four different GPU to, to do this um, calculation. Um, so basically the key is, is to split your output, uh, uh, your output to a different region, right? Um, and you could do this splitting in different way. You could think about regularized splitting like this, nice four region, or like if you have uh, different compute on different nodes, you could split it differently. And like this nice structure of, and, and if you think about what allows you to do that is really these small kernels, right? Parameter sharing essentially, because the parameters are shared across, um, um, across all of these, right? Um, like parameters are shared essentially between this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. So you could split it uh, into different region and that's the power of parameter sharing these small kernels uh, that allow you to do this splitting. And you have like um, different way to do a splitting like big region, a small region, like however you want to do it because uh, the math works in, in that case. Uh, like you can think about each of these region as independent region. Um, so you could do this, this parallelization uh, across the output region in your uh, convolution. Any question about this? You can also do this um, for your filters as well, right? Um, so basically, essentially, um, for each um, for each map, right? So you could um, for each of these guys, um, you could consider them as um, differently, right? Um, you could produce each map, right? Um, and this for all is a uh, basically the difference between for all and four is like for all is parallel version of uh, four, right? Um, so bas basically you can treat each feature map uh, independently and you could assign them to different um, um, GPU and um, calculate these feature maps uh, in parallel, right? Um, So at the end, like you get this, um, the next layer, uh, these feature maps independently or a bunch of them independently. Uh, like if you have like 
um, hundred feature map, you could like um, have four uh, GPU. You could split these hundred to uh, to four different, you know, batch. Uh, you can calculate them. Or if you have hundred GPU, then good luck. Uh, run them in parallel, all of that. Um, so um, that's the uh, another way that you can think about this uh, parallelization for convolution neural network. Um, for um, fully connected, also there are um, you can think about parallelization opportunities. Um, so um, you remember about this uh, large uh, uh, weight matrix, uh, which was like uh, 16 million for the case that this was like uh, 4K, 4K, right? Uh, this matrix was like huge. Uh, and we had to retrieve this huge matrix out of memory. Um, but now you could think about uh, splitting this into two different region, right? Um, and then uh, calculate this um, output activation. Um, so basically, essentially, you parallelize calculating this output um, 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 activations uh, in parallel. And this means that really uh, splitting your matrix into two half uh, and do this um, uh, matrix to uh, to vector calculation in parallel, right? So, like um, this would be essentially W. Um, how can I say? Um, this would be W I J um, multiplied by A J, right? To calculate B um, I, and then um, W I J. This guy, let's call it WIJ prime, maybe, uh, or one and two better, uh, multiplied by AG to calculate uh, BI. This is one, this is two, right? Essentially two different, um, two different uh, activation, um, these guys in, in parallel, if you have two GPU, for example. Um, two CPUs, whatever, two cores, basically. Um, right, and if you remember like this input, I mean, you don't need to split this because this input was already small, right? Um, this input was um, 4K, right? Um, but this guy was huge, humongous. Um, so you can do um, model parallelization for also for fully connected uh, neural network as well. But you see that how different they are because of the difference of uh, the calculation, right? There you had convolution, you had kernels, right? The small kernels, you could split. Um, here you cannot do these, right? Um, um, because you don't have kernels, um, but um, but at least you can do this way, right? You can split it this way if you want, or like you have you can have like multiple as well, right? Uh, but you cannot split it in two two D, right? That's the kind of difference you can think about it. Um, and because of these dependencies, uh, you you have to have first these guys and then uh, calculate these guys uh, in the next in the next layer. And then, like the other um, opportunity you can think about is hyperparameters. And you know that like all all this stuff that we talk about is about the model itself, updating the weights. But like for each uh, ML um, model, you have some bunch of hyperparameters, which are different from the parameters itself, right? This distinguish these hyperparameters from the parameters. These are like some parameters that influence, like for example, the learning rate is the hyper is a hyperparameter, right? 
is a parameter you want to you never know what what learning rate it makes sense you want to try different thing and um and see which one works best right um like um this could be defined as search over hyperparameter space this is a um also by itself is um is a line of research and that's a, essentially difficulties um you might have heard about the hyperparameter optimization. This is also a line of research. It's a kind of a search uh, over a massive scale. If you have like, imagine uh, you have like 10 hyperparameters and 10 hyperparameters could like gets different value. Like this learning rate could be anything, right? Uh, essentially, uh, and imagine you have 10 of these that could be anything like what combination works best is a huge search space um, that you need to search because they really some of these are nasty and affect the performance, the training, um, the accuracy of your model greatly. Um, another line of research very much related to this is um, neural architecture search which is finding, um, um, it's very much related to hyperparameter, but essentially now um, is, is to, to find the right architecture for your problem, right? Um, how many layers you want to have, um, how many neurons at each layer you want to get, um, and all of these affect um, the accuracy of, uh, of your task, right? Uh, for now, we, we only assume that the architecture is fixed. We never talk about, okay, how, how many layers you need. And that's a hard problem uh, to find that out, uh, right? Um, and this neural architecture stage is also an interesting hot uh, area in research um, that people are working. And uh, we also work on, on these two uh, line of research, if you are interested, uh, one of, uh, my student Shahriar Iqbal is working on this. Um, he developed a, a tool called Flexible. Right. Can look it up. Um, uh, that does some of these hyperparameter optimization, um, to some extent, no architecture search um, for uh, for. When, when we have multiple objectives, uh, like essentially we discuss about uh, not only accuracy, but also energy consumption of neural network, right? So when you have multiple uh, objectives, right? Uh, and this is already for one objective, the accuracy is already a hard problem. And imagine that you have multiple objectives. So it gets really crazy um, for, uh, for this sort of stuff. Any question about this? Yeah, and um, so um, having more core, obviously you get some performance, typically linear, uh, increased in terms of um, computation. This is um like uh number of frames per second that you can um calculate um obviously with more cores um this gets um this gets um, um a kind of you can think about linear increase in terms of uh with this metric uh, frame per second that you can get out of parallelization um for neural network uh, stuff. Also, like um, people are showing that um, you can also, uh, by increasing, uh, by doing uh, uh, model parallel uh, stuff and also data parallel, the two paradigm. This is again uh, the paper out of Google uh, by increasing the uh, number of machine, the x-axis is the number of machines that is used, um, and the y-axis is the training speed up, right? Uh, these are for different uh, 
neural networks for either a speech or image of different size, right? So you see that this is like crazy size, 1.7 billion parameters for image processing this and massively um, um, uh, benefited from both model and data polarization, right? Um, and this is essentially, this graph shows uh, machine per model in a stance, meaning that they did uh, model polarization, right? Um, but um, this is a smaller, right? Um, gets um, relatively good at speed up. Um, um, the other one, um, right? Um, the blue one, um, 80 million, uh, much smaller, um, somehow got some benefit, but not uh, similar to these guys. And this interesting trend for this uh, speech recognition, you saw that like, this is totally different from like these three guys. These are image processing and this uh, speech essentially uh, is, uh, is different. I'm not sure, I forgot what kind of a speech model they use probably uh, RNN um, types. Uh, and you see that uh, essentially this model parameter, model polarization didn't help also deteriorated for, for a couple of uh, machine increase, it increased the performance, but afterward it, it was deteriorated as a result of um, so many things, could be as a result of, uh, um, memory access um, could be um, could the reason could be uh, could be many things, right? Um, and essentially, this shows that the type of architecture matters, and this would influence um, the speed up essentially uh, when you do different type of a speed up, like uh, model polarization or data polarization. Um, so the takeaway is that these image processing convolutional models benefited greatly, but not this speech, right? Um, so um, that's a key takeaway. The last point I want to talk about um, today is about um, memory uh, briefly, but hopefully later we go into deeper discussion. Uh, we, we discussed that like memory could be um, a bottleneck here, especially when um, you saw that for uh, a speech model, um, it was deteriorated, could be the case that uh, memory really, the IO was the um, bottleneck in, in that case. And recently companies like NVIDIA um, have started to look into um, how um, how we can access memory, um, right? Because we have two things, right? Um, we have in one machine, uh, we need to um, access memory. Uh, at the GPU that you have, uh, you need to read and update uh, your weights uh, from memory. And like these are uh, weights in, in your memory and the memory in inside your GPU is very much limited. Um, so, um, so you have limited memory in individual GPU. Uh, so you, you rely on external memory and even memory outside of your machine, especially if you have multiple worker nodes, uh, you, you may need to have access to the memory in some other nodes. So you, you have some communication uh, across network as well uh, in order to do that. Um, so these several technologies appeared uh, for accessing uh, the, uh, the memory, right? Especially communication over network um, and external memory, like uh, essentially it's called GPU direct, uh, right? Um, GPU direct kind of uh, technology that um, 
this GPU uh, in order to have access uh, to a third party doesn't need to go through um, CPU. Previously, it needed to go through CPU and CPU was a bottleneck here to access to a third party uh, device. This GPU direct, um, they can directly communicate uh, through PCI Express, right? Um, PCI communication um, to, uh, to make this uh, communication a lot, a lot more efficient uh, without having a bottleneck uh, through CPU. So, um, so this is CPU uh, direct storage, for example, um, mainly accessing the um, accessing the external uh, memory, right? So this is the previous paradigm. Uh, you see that this GPU. Um, in order to um, to talk with um, uh, with these memory guys, uh, right? So these are uh, MVM Express uh, modules uh, that uh, might be in your machine. And um, in order to do that, you need to have access to the system memory, which are facilitated by CPU. Uh, so you could not. Um, take read the uh, memory directly. Uh, but with this technology, with this um, GPU direct, you can, you don't need any, any communication. You don't need this stuff. You can directly uh, read from memory without going through the CPU, uh, which was your bottleneck. Um, so these, these technologies, um, GPU direct um, storage, for example, um, enable this efficient because now, Mention that, like, when you go to large scale, and, and again, these these challenges happen at larger scale. It doesn't matter for when you have uh, one node in your laptop, right? <laughs> uh, so it, it matters at larger scale when you have many nodes and the I/O become um, bottleneck. Um, so you need to um, you need to have um, technology to facilitate this. And like you might have like external in this case or RAID kind of thing, some external memory as well as some internal memory. So you can have, and for each of these, you have like um, PCI connection, right? Um, so this will help to um, all of these um, could, could, all of this GPU could directly communicate with, uh, with the memory, right? These guys, um, these guys, uh, in order to, um, to make it happen. So for example, you can think about it as a parameter server, right? This guy is your um, parameter server. And each of these could be worker nodes, right? Could be worker node two worker node one right and um, through this um, pci communication like even you can like have uh, some interesting communication pattern you 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 can have like hierarchical pattern where you have central and like different worker nodes right doing this two-way um, communication, or you can like even like have a ring. So maybe you don't need this. You could have like your worker nodes uh, could communicate directly with each other through this um, technology, right? Um, GPU direct. So you could get, uh, you could construct a ring um, uh, architecture topology uh, in order. So each worker node can communicate whatever it, it whatever delta it came up with, right? Delta P, um, it can send the delta once it's finished and communicate it with the all other um, uh, nodes, right? And neighbor nodes. And this would uh, facilitate, uh, this would make it very interesting. So if this finished, it this communicate with its neighbor. Uh, and this at the end would converge. Like if you have many nodes, uh, they only need to, compute, uh, communicate with snable, or you could also create a mesh if you want, 
communicate with all uh, all other nodes. Uh, so you could construct essentially different um, different um, different kind of uh, topology from uh, hierarchical where you have or uh, a ring or even um, like when you have many different things, you can construct a mesh, right? Um, out of all of this, right? Um, and you can like this, this also facilitate um, um, uh, the communication and converge faster when you have, um, when you have a large network uh, to do either model parallelism or data parallelization. So this this basically uh, wanted to convey that essentially memory matters, um, right? Um, all of these are again back to this um, picture that we had before. Um, come on. So the, back to this picture that we had before, we saw that, okay, we might have bottleneck here. If we do crazy polarization here, like if, if I have like 200 GPU nodes, if, if I parallelize this to calculate like a stuff very quickly, and if I'm a slow here, then this doesn't matter, right? So I don't see the benefit end to end. Um, and um, this technology, appear because like we are looking at a larger ecosystem of machine learning system, right? Um, it's not just your single model sitting on your laptop, it's like whole uh, ecosystem that, uh, that something become a bottleneck, right? People start paralyzing uh, uh, model, right? Or paralyzing training um, with whatever paradigm and then something irrelevant become bottleneck like IO. And then people start, oh, we need a technology to talk directly with, uh, with memory. <laughs> the previous technology uh, now become bottleneck, right? And that's why you see like these new technology every week. <laughs> uh, something become bottleneck and you need to fix it. So you need to create a new thing. Uh, then this new thing would <laughs> would help to create a like amazing thing, and then something else become bottleneck. You need to fix that too. Uh, so uh, all of this, you need to think a step back and like think about a bigger picture um, if you want to ask why these technologies or this this stuff matters. And again, um, for you guys, um, we are discussing this because you get the opportunity to know beyond what you are, uh, what you used to work, like not looking just at the model, but knowing deeper down what's happening in your computer uh, when you run these things. At least you have to have some intuition. Uh, let's um, stop here. Um, I would stay if, if you have any questions. No question. Are you all um, doing fine with your um, course project? Someone just asked a question in the chat. Could you please um, like ask it verbally if you could? Yeah, sure. Um, this is Daniel. Uh, I was wondering if we can expect a grade for task one before task two is due. Uh, we try the best. Yeah, that's that's the goal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So task two is is really still very unclear to me. I don't think there's very much helpful detail at all in the uh, task description, and it basically just points us to the Athena paper, which either also doesn't provide detail or is not understandable to me as a reader. Um, is there a chance we could go over this in the lecture sometime and really 
I mean, I don't think it's ever been really fully fleshed out and explained in class. Sure. Yeah, we could uh, we could have um, a tutorial about that, um, helping you guys. But please don't expect like as as you had in task one, right? Um, so uh, this would be helpful if you could like create an issue and like mention it. What is uh, unclear? Um, so it it would help us a lot when we work on this tutorial, right? Um, so Ying can, um, can this, this give her opportunity to think how this tutorial should look like, right? Um, so if you could create an issue and others can, can put like some other thoughts, that would be excellent. Yeah, I made an issue yesterday and I can try to add some more detail about uh, particular sort of questions, but the other complication is that everybody has a different option chosen for this time. So I have my questions about the options that my team chose, but that may not even be helpful to the rest of the class. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So yeah, I would encourage others who work on the other options, right, um, to create an issue, right? Um, maybe one issue per option, right? That would be excellent. Um, we would really appreciate it if you guys take the lead on this, right? Don't wait for the last minute. Uh, try to go into the detail, um, create an issue, explain what is missing, what you want to know, uh, questions if you have, um, like um, this week, right? No later than this week. If like, you come up near deadline, we cannot help you, right? We would love to help you guys, right? And you know that um, this matters a lot for us uh, to help you to the extent that you can learn uh, and get something out of this. Um, and this is like my uh, way of a style of teaching, right? Uh, I'm, I don't, I mean, like uh, for me, learning matters. Uh, you like to give you the opportunity to learn and take away as much as possible rather than thinking about the final grade. Uh, as long as you are interested in learning, um, I'm, I'm the kind of those kind of teachers that for me learning matters uh, great, not that much uh, as, as so great for me is, is like, uh, is a way, uh, somehow you can think about it in the way that you, you have to deliver something, work on something, um, learn throughout and show something. Um, so this, this is a kind of regularizer rather than motivation. This, is, this should be uh, a way how you also treat other courses as well, right? Uh, for the way how I would like to, a student to think about this thing is that like learning matters great, not much. Um, um, and this is the way how I think about this stuff. So basically as long as you, we see that you tried, um, you, um, you, t you thought about it, um, like the report that uh, you write is like, you can clearly see that you thought about this stuff, right? Uh, you analyzed, um, you, you got some results, um, you, you basically write a nice report. Um, this would be sufficient for, for us to see that, okay, um, this would be excellent, right? Professor, uh, last night I, all, uh, I posted a, um, in, in Athena. So did you see that actually I forgot something I already mentioned. Um, I mentioned I don't like those kind of emails, so please don't. Um, that doesn't like. Um, if there is something you can uh, you can update it in GitHub, right? If you forgot to mention your contribution, you could um, like update your create it like you. You push new update to GitHub. Uh, we could easily compare with the tag. Uh, um, that you uh, you put for uh, for your submission, and that would be uh, easy, right? 
do everything oh. in, on GitHub. Uh, no email, please. Oh. <laughs> and the, about this stuff, right? So you are free to send email if you have questions and stuff. But these are easy to facilitate through GitHub or other stuff. No, because I was confused because uh, you told that uh, after the deadline, uh, it should it is not good to sub to update anything. So just I didn't add anything. No, I made it clear you can update it until the last minute, but you should have a tag for for your submission, right? Uh, you should have a tag, a GitHub tag. I I made it clear in the project description how to create it. Uh, that this is like our submission. Uh, obviously, you are free to make updates to, to your stuff, and this is easy to compare uh, with your uh, GitHub um, um, history of comments, right? Because I was actually scared that for getting the penalty. You don't need to scare about anything in this course, at least the courses that I teach. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Any other question? Yeah, so um, one of the big hangups I think uh, my team had, I think just for the first task was trying to figure out just how to divvy up tasks, right? Because this is this is sort of a difficult thing, I guess, with, with leading a group of people is just figuring out like an optimal method for separating tasks. And I was wondering if you had any kind of advice um, with the second how, coming task? How to assign things between you guys? Uh, is this what you? Yeah, because I mean, like, so we can do, you know, there are ways you could you could break up a task such that everybody's, everything has to be done sequentially where person one has to do, finish what they're doing before person two can like work on mm -hmm. the next part. But that doesn't really, that doesn't really work. And it also, it means that you, you have like a very narrow, I guess, vision about like what's happening in the big picture, but at the same time working in parallel um, usually means you're working on different things. And I guess trying to extract value from that is really difficult. So I didn't know if for like us for, op for, for option, we're doing option two. So we have like a learning based strategy for the ensemble. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think like how to how to break this up in a realistic way, and also I guess noting the fact that some of us have different strengths. Like some of us know Python a whole lot better than others. So, I mean, um, you could you could think about like um, think about assigning different variations of these. Like for example, you could split it up based on the uh, ensemble strategy, like uh, based on the size of your model, like it would be good if, if uh, one of you guys who are like much better at programming, like could take the lead to some of these. I know it's um, might be difficult, uh, but in a way to create some very small thing uh, that show others, right? Hey, I did this. Uh, you can try it this way, right? Um, not necessarily doing the whole thing, right? Uh, a small part of it, um, and then um, helping a little bit the other team members to proceed and uh, work independently. That's that's a way I'm thinking now, but. I see that it is always difficult to work in a group, especially like even um, when we do research, it takes time until we find the work habit of each other, right? Uh, until we become comfortable collaborating <laughs> um, later on for student projects. Um, um, so uh, I would probably leave that to you, but like these are some thoughts like a splitting like taking the lead is one option or splitting based on this and like, hey, you guys go and figure it out independently and whoever come up first could like, um, could share and like, uh, could share this um, progress, right? This is the way I'm thinking, right? So you could um, have a meeting, discuss, okay, this is what we need to do. 
let's try it out independently. Um, whoever gets something first, share with others, um, and then uh, and then you continue. But this doesn't mean that um, like one should has to do everything and others nothing. Uh, if we find out about this, uh, obviously we see from GitHub uh, history, right? That's easy to see. Uh, we want all of you to, to commit uh, to this re repository, uh, right? And somehow relatively having the same contribution uh, for each group. Um, so um, this is something that really uh, we want to uh, see happens. Not only one person doing everything and others just observe. That's, that doesn't work. Um, and by the way, like you also for the final thing, um, I clarified it in the description. You need to create a short video, um, basically presenting um, the the work. Uh, you know, um, explaining what did you do, also like what you have learned, um, right? Um, the findings, interesting results. Uh, and so on, and that would be fantastic, right? Uh, I would love to see interesting videos uh, that you could create. You could like use Zoom and you could meet and like record this together, right? Um, if you want, you can um, basically create a presentation or you can simply talk over your uh, notebook, right? Uh, we can show in a video, okay, uh, let's do this in, Jupyter notebook, right? Um, and discuss with each other uh, what what you find out, and like um, basically is a think about it as an informal conversation that you could have between yourself, in a way that would be super useful for others to understand what's going on. So you show like what did you do and what did you find out, the result that you get, um, and all of this. Um, yeah, that would be super useful if you could um, make an interesting video. Uh, that would be useful later on for yourself, uh, all of you, uh, when you want to uh, go to the job market, uh, you can have uh, this kind of thing as a demo, right? A project that you did, a real project. Uh, so, and, and, I mentioned that this this stuff is going crazy, so um, so all of you would benefit from from this. Uh, Professor, I have a question, a short yeah. question, because in the Athena paper uh, there are few um, uh, is uh, discussed about few attacks. So definitely, uh, all of members, all of the team members are not uh, working with the same attack. So I'm using one attack. So my other members. So do I have to uh, get idea for the, about the other attacks, or there's, it is enough uh, just uh, with with which attack I'm working? So just focus on this. Actually, does it make sense what I'm trying to ask? Mm, can you specify that? You mean uh, splitting that based on the type of attack, right? Yes, right. So yeah, you, can, you can obviously do that. Yeah, that's also a good suggestion, right? Uh, splitting based on the attack is also one way of um, doing this stuff, right? Uh, splitting between yourself, right? Hey, I'm more familiar with FGSM. I want to work on this. Um, the other one, I'm interested more in JSMA. I want to work on this, right? Uh, uh, or other attack that you recently may um, like uh, may saw out there and you want to implement or like um, for the other attacks, obviously you can, you can like you don't need to implement and, and you know that like this is a trend in machine learning, um, like good researchers always publish their code out there. Um, you can, you can find the code and try to um, Attack Athena, right? Um, that correct no. is not is not there. So it's, it would be a good try if you want to do that. No, I'm I'm just asking because actually uh, mm, there are many many students here uh, here that 
two challenging things. One is the programming language and another is the machine learning by itself. So some of our, some of the students, we don't have any programming background. Uh, I mean, I, this is, this is clear. Uh, it's, it's required, uh, right? Um, and if, if, I mean, I made it relatively easy for others to, to join this course, to take this course by requiring a, only one course as a requirement for graduate students uh also um uh, like they can take it i mean i mentioned it in day one uh, that's fine even if you don't know language but if by now you did not learn even python this is obviously your fault uh, no, no, no. There, there is no there is no excuse telling telling us that uh i did not know and at the moment i don't know no excuse for that you i would be fine you did not know at the beginning but Python is the least thing that you could have learned in like one week. Uh, at no, least sir. learning to the state that you can play with it, <laughs> right? Yes, still uh, now I'm learning. Just I'm asking it because you know that uh, it is. It might be uh, in from my point of view. Uh, if I learn something specific from the Athena paper, not I'm not thinking just to learn every attack. Just I'm thinking just specific some portion some portion so that's uh, that is the thing I'm, I, I'm asking sorry I don't understand what you think no, no I'm, I'm just asking just uh, is it necessary to have a uh, big no a good knowledge uh, about the whole Athena paper like the for example just uh, that there are a few attacks on on the At Athena uh, a few attacks are mentioned on the Athena so do I have to get do I have to get the um, strong knowledge on the all attacks just specific one attack obviously I... not this is very clear we don't want yes, yes. To, to learn about all attacks <laughs> <laughs> this is super clear we don't want you guys to spend time on like so many things no this is super clear do the task uh learn as much as as you, much as you can because this project is not about the attack part this project is about the defense uh, if you have some idea about improving Athena or something, yes, like we encourage it, right? Uh, but we don't want you to spend time on learning attacks. If you are interested in using new attacks, yes, maybe you can read one paper and try to implement it or use their code to see how it works. But definitely we don't want to like go into 20 different or 100 different papers and attacks to understand them all. Obviously this is out, no. Is that clear? Yes, sir, it is clear. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? Sounds good. Um, yeah, please um, create issue, um, especially since this is a task you have, you are working on different options. Um, and like Andrew mentioned, um, he created the issue. Please, um, Andrew helped a lot on task one, right? You also do your uh, contribution, right? Uh, create issue. Uh, if you have questions or you need, you need clarification or something, let us know. And do it as soon as possible, right? No later than this weekend. Okay, it was good. Uh, thanks. Talk to you soon.